when I'm not protesting the new Beatles documentary by refusing to watch it until they get back together. I like to answer questions and comments, so to get on YouTube, so let's get to it. In which Sean shows himself to be the Tanya Harding of modes, he really goes after it. So this is on a video I did the other night where I had a running metaphor that I used to be a uh, pairs figure skater. And it was so late at night that I went extra hard on that metaphor and just kept hammering it. You can always tell when I shoot these videos by how into the opening metaphor I get and like determined to stick with it. So uh, definitely watch that because uh, some pretty good pairs figure skating metaphors as related to guitars. But we talked about the modes a little bit. So let's have a weekly little... Uh, little recap on how to incorporate modes in your playing because you don't need to you don't need to know the modes but everybody is interested to a certain extent until you get too deep so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take something in the key of g major but we're never gonna play a g major chord we're gonna do a, a d seven to a c major seven all right and this is what we're gonna do to focus on how to make this sound modal all right so when you have like a d chord in the key of G, you're in the mixed leading mode. All that means is if you play the notes in the key of G, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, but you start on a D, you get D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C, D. What's special about that? I've already lost half the people out here. Back to figure skating metaphor over here, guys. <laughs> All we've got is the major scale with one difference. Instead of the D major scale, we have the D mixolydian scale. So what we're going to do is we're going to take what's special about this position in this key, okay? And right here, these notes on the D and G string, 4 and 5 and 4 and 5, D7. That note right there is what's different. That's what gives it its signature sound within a different key, the key of G major, but we're basing this around D7. By focusing on just what makes it special. Okay, so anytime you get even just a regular D major chord, just think about maybe this little four note kind of box is how I see it, right? Four and five and four and five on the D and the G string. But I think to really get the most out of modes in like a musical, practical sense, you gotta have a little bit of a chord progression. So let's add another chord. Let's add C major seven to it, right? So I'm gonna play the C major seven like this. Three on the A string, two on the D string, four on the G string. And let's use those same four notes over the C chord. I can do a different voicing of a D chord. Maybe like a D9 chord right here. This is a really good one if you haven't used this one. I think I did a, a short on this one a couple days ago. 5A, 4D, 5 all the way down the line. C major 7. D9. C major 7. Okay, so like, what does that sound like? Try to describe that sound. Does that sound happy? Does that sound sad? No, it just sounds different. It sounds modal. We're playing all the notes in the key of G, but we're not playing a G major chord, okay? So the point of this is, do you really even have to think modally about things? It really just depends on your goals as a guitar player, as a musician. I, I don't really find myself thinking of the modes, I think of chords, right? And I think of like the tonal center of things, like, oh, I, I really am a big fan of, of Lydian, so the fourth mode. It's a fancy, stupid way of saying, I just like the four chord in any key. If I'm in the key of G, I'm probably not gonna play a G major chord. I'm gonna play a C major seven chord. I'm gonna build everything around that C major chord, right? Some would say that means I'm playing in Lydian. Whatever, I'm just playing a song that I like the sound of, right? I think the value in modes is it just kind of like being able to understand why you like certain things. Like for me, I never really liked 
one four five chord progressions or one five six four chord progressions, which are kind of you know, I, I don't want to call them basic. Again, I am the Tanya Harding of modes. A one a one five six four is like a a Nancy Kerrigan chord progression. Is it too soon? Is it? Is there like a statute of limitations on making Tanya Harding jokes? Because that's like such a dirty, <laughs> such a dirty act that took place. Man, remember the '90s when you could, you know. Tennis players were stabbing each other in the back, and figure skaters were piping each other in the knees. That was a that was a time. Anyways, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say whether I'm the Tanya Harding of modes or not. I'm just try I'm just trying to play and have fun playing Liddy and playing the four horn. But a great way to do that is focusing on what makes the mode special, and then trying to make some music out of it. Right? P nine. C major 7. I'm just focusing on this little four note spot within that larger kind of context key, right? Uh, the other great value of it is I think it's just great to learn shapes to connect to the fretboard. G major, A Dorian, B Phrygian. Kind of like learning those shapes is a great way to just start making connections. And that's when people on the internet will say, you're not playing, you're not playing the modes, you're just playing positions of the major scale. Great, good job, congratulations, keep it up. So Sean, what are your thoughts and opinion of your new Gibson? So if you missed it, Sweetwater sent me the Gibson G45. Uh, awesome guitar, $1,200, made in America. Some people were linking me to a video where some people like cut this thing open and were like bashing it. I mean, I, I don't know. I think it sounds great to me. And uh, just a, uh, just kind of to take a second to talk about how it works with the stuff. I'll work with companies. They'll send me a guitar or a piece of gear or something, and I'll demo it. I never review it. Maybe not never. I've done reviews in the past, like kind of revisiting things. But it's hard to, to review something when you've only had it for like a week. That's why I say I demo it. Uh, I have had stuff where I've opened it and it wasn't any good and I did a demo and I just didn't like it and I just don't post that stuff. I don't, if, if it makes it onto the channel, that means it's at least worthy enough to like play and I think it's like good. You'd be surprised how many, how much stuff out there, you know, will show up from like a company or something. And that's why I don't want to name names or something because every now and then you just get a bad demo of something like a, a bad product. But uh, if I do get a bad product, I just never put it on the channel. So the fact that it's ever on the channel means that at least it's pretty good. I, I think it's pretty good. I think this thing sounds great. I feel like $1,200 is a pretty good price for like a, a Made in America guitar. But uh, the ultimate mark of approval is if this still ends up being in videos on the channel after a year. Because, you know... Uh, Usually how it is, it's they're usually like one-off videos where it's like, hey, would you like to do a video about this guitar? And they send it and I use it. And then my obligation is done. So if I keep using it, that means you know that I really like it. And uh, I think I'll probably keep using this guy in uh, a bunch of videos to come. So definitely check out the performance I did with Andrea of a Phoebe Bridger song called Motion Sickness, which is fantastic if you've never heard that song before. Great, great song. I like that song even more now, knowing that it's about Ryan Adams. And uh, also the unboxing that we did is pretty funny too. So uh, check it out. And thank you to Sweetwater and Gibson once again for sending this one over. By the way, Sean, I've got a question or let's say questions. It'd be nice to hear your opinion if you've got time to reply. I'm a newbie in guitar and I'm interested in lots of music styles from bluegrass, finger style, Travis picking. I don't have a model to whose style I can stick. I'm a bit of a hard to please listener. So how would you recommend that I learn guitar? Should I pick specific songs or should I bypass the taste barrier and learn different techniques, even using the songs that I don't find appealing to me. Another question, which should I focus on more in the beginning, flat picking or finger picking, or both simultaneously? Thanks a lot for the great content. You really are a legend, man. Again, this does kind of come down to your goals. I think if you're just doing it as a hobby to have fun, you want to do stuff that you're going to have fun with. Most people, I would say, have more fun learning songs than just focusing on techniques, but I also don't think it has to be one or the other. I think it's great to practice different techniques with different songs, right? So let's say you want to practice some Travis style finger picking, right? I, I do recommend everybody learn some kind of finger style picking. In fact, didn't even plan this, but I'm going to put the finger style course I made with my buddy Kyle, who is a legit classical instructor on Super Sale, 
for Cyber Monday, whatever week this is, uh, in the description, if you do want to learn fingerstyle, because I do think that any kind of fingerstyle, whether it's on acoustic guitar or electric guitar, is a great thing to learn because you just kind of feel a little more connected hitting individual strings that maybe even just kind of like using a pick stuff like that but let's say you want to learn travis picking right i would say learn a travis picking song i think uh i learned travis picking just by trying to learn shaky grave songs right i wasn't really like all right i'm gonna try to just i'm just gonna travis pick a c major chord over and over again well you know that's great to focus in on for one section maybe but i always just like jumping around so if you can use that travis style technique in in the context of the song to me there's more of a payoff there but not everybody's like that so that's why it's hard to say like how you should learn what you should do is to keep doing the things that keep you interested in picking up your guitar and sticking with it, right? If you find yourself not wanting to actually pick up the instrument, then maybe you should try kind of changing up the, the practice sessions a little bit. You know, if you're burning yourself out on songs, maybe just take that. I'm, I'm that way. Sometimes if I'm like, man, I just feel overloaded, like inundated, learning all of these different songs for like gigs or videos or whatever. Sometimes it's actually kind of like cathartic and therapeutic to just kind of like run the scales for a little bit, you know? And uh, a lot of people, the opposite. Maybe they never even want to touch scales, which is fine. It's great to know your music theory. Everybody should know your music theory. There's no place where it's too early to start. But, uh, Learning songs, learning techniques go hand in hand. You have to learn techniques to be able to play songs. You have to have songs to be able to show off your techniques. So don't think of it as one or the other. Whatever makes you pick up the instrument is what you should be doing. This is the first time I hear you're singing such a soothing voice. Keep it up, Sean. Thanks so much. Uh, this is on the video where someone requested some country music and me and Pasha just knocked out some Emerald Riders live. I think the singing is coming along. Definitely a work in progress. I've been doing this 30 day singer course thing because uh, they sponsored a video that I'll probably have coming out like next week ish or something. And that's helped me just be more thoughtful about kind of the proper technique to sing. I mean, for some people singing is just like a God given like ability that they can just do, but everybody else can like improve. Like nobody's beyond ever improving at singing. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, your voice is still your voice, but you can still maximize stuff. That's what I've learned. Just kind of like being thoughtful about different techniques has, has made me a better singer. Not that I'm like the greatest singer in the world, but I'm definitely thoughtfully trying to improve and get better. And uh, I'll link the 30 day singer thing too, even though I haven't posted that video yet, just because uh, it's a good value. You know what I mean? You're just, just to actually get like professionals telling you how to do something. Cause I've always just, just tried it and just let it rip, see what happens. And uh, it, it helps being thoughtful and actually having a little bit of structure and guidance, which just goes along with just like practicing anything, like we said before. This young guy is a smirk. Keeps trying to steer the show, him and his girl. They just want to get famous off Davidas. Lame. Those of us that are hard Davidas fans can see right through them. Man, remind me to avoid those hard Davidas fans. <laughs> So this was on this actually was on one of my videos i my my bro my homie for life davidas who slays it if you guys don't know him huge youtuber amazing guitar player performer singer everything uh he, his youtube channel is killing it and he had me on to do one of my songs uh again it's some people are like oh this is a setup no it wasn't a setup i, I, I was just we were both performing in the same area and i was going to say hey and uh, I knew he was. I knew he was gonna be there for sure. But he's like, "Hey, let's do one of your songs." I'm like, "Yeah, going under is kind of a three chord loop. Let's do it." Rocked it out. He was nice enough to put me on his channel, do a little, doing a little singing. And uh, this guy was, <laughs> was salty about it because <laughs> I was trying to steal his show. And uh, like all those hard Davidas fans out there, they saw right through my evil plan. This performance should get you the Hallmark Christmas movie deal you so desperately want. Someone send this video to a Hallmark director. What else do I have to do to get on the Hallmark channel? I feel like my goals here are so very, like I, I feel like I have tempered my expectations. Don't wanna be an actor. Don't wanna be a successful actor. Small part, I'm gonna read it. I'm just gonna keep saying it till I have, I'm sorry that you guys have to listen to it over and over again every week. 
Small part, douchebag boyfriend, the beginning of the Hallmark Christmas movie, that gets dumped when the girl learns that there's better out there for her. That shouldn't... Who else is aspiring to that? That's that's the top of what I want. That's all I need. I feel like I think I'm going to start making more of a focused Instagram effort because I'm just going to start just tagging pictures of myself, I guess, <laughs> and sending that to the Hallmark Channel Instagram account. So please, everybody, uh, everybody on Insta, help me do this because it takes a village apparently to get your boy onto that Hallmark Channel. But uh, I will never give up because it is my birthright. All right, for listening homework this week, we're going to throw it back to another artist that really taught me excellent Travis picking finger style stuff. And that's my favorite blues player of all time, Keb Mo. His whole album, Suitcase, is fantastic. You guys should all listen to it. I'm a huge Keb Mo fan, so I'm going to throw you some of his music. And uh, definitely show him some love because I, I think he's a living legend. So good, great singer, phenomenal player. Just seems like a totally chill guy. So uh, maybe he'd like to be in a Hallmark Channel movie, movie with me. So uh, let's make that happen, guys. And then if you have any questions or comments, hit me in the comment section, Instagram, Twitter, website. Check out the Fingerstyle course. Uh, super sale for the next week or so. And uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks a lot.